we want to welcome those that will be watching us on the that watch us live those that watch us later on facebook or youtube we want to welcome you give them a good hand would you amen we appreciate you this morning god's got something special for us today Say it one more time. God's got something special yeah, for on, us today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank this you, is Jesus. the day the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice, and we'll be glad in it. Amen. Amen. If, you need a, if you need a miracle today, let this be your day to receive. He's a, he, his, he's a God that is always on the throne, and his power never ceases. I love the Lord. Is anybody excited that winter's almost over? Yes! I mean, I don't know. I'm so, I'm so excited because I, I tell you, I don't know exactly what God's about to do, but I can tell you this. As soon as the weather breaks a little bit, we're going to be having a lot of services outside Come the on, church. Jesus. We're going to. God wakes me up constantly and, and speaks to me on this. And, and I'm excited about it because something's about to happen. God, there's a, there's a breeze blowing out of heaven. And I call him the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He's moving. Let's just stand right now and welcome the Lord to have his way in our service. If you're at home right now, welcome the Holy Spirit into your house and let him minister to you right now. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do worship you today. Lord, we ask, Father, that you'll receive our worship today, God. Be pleased with us, God. And we pray, Lord, to everyone that needs a healing touch, everyone that needs a touch in their body, Lord, in their mind, Lord, in their spirit, God. Lord, may they receive right now, Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we pray right now, Lord, that you'll just move in a mighty way, Lord in our services. Have your way today, God, we pray. Something's about to happen, God, and we give you praise right now. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap of worship right now. Sister, Sister Sheila, call us into worship. I want you to worship with all your soul, might, and strength. Let's enter into the atmosphere that God has for us today. Oh! 
Come on, church. Come on. What you waiting on? What you waiting on? There's something happening. Press in right now. I come against every spirit of hindrance right now in the name of Jesus. I come against every spirit that's come to hinder in the mighty name of Jesus. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I release the angels in this place. I release the angels in this place. Receive right now. Angels release right now. Come on. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Praise 
hands up. That sounds good. Come on. Whoa. There's a sound arising. There's a sound arising. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praising his name, no, I just can't stop. 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 Praising his name, no, I just
shout of praise. Give him a shout of praise. He's worthy of your praise this morning. He's worthy of your praise. Come on, you've got more than that in you. You've got more than that in you. You've got more than that in you. Oh, he's so worthy. 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 Come on, church. Lift your voice up to him right now. If you got the spirit language, begin to worship right now in your spirit language. Come on, right now. Lift your, let me hear you. Lift your voice. If you don't, worship in English. Come on. beautiful Savior. Oh, the beautiful Savior. We're joining in with heaven this morning to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, he's everything this morning. He's everything. Tell him how wonderful he is. Tell him how wonderful he is. Jesus, look at his face this morning.
sing that one more time. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Just let him minister to you right now. you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a good clap of worship in the house. Praise the Lord. Glad to see you in the house of the Lord. You may be seated. Good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. God has got something special for us, something great and mighty. Well, I'm just excited what God's about to do. Amen? God is good. We're going to, this time we're going to have Sister Becky, if she would, to bless her offering. If you have an offering this morning. If you've done giving or if you haven't, and those that are on the internet, if you want to give, you can just hit the, the give and follow directions, and it's a very secure site. You can give unto the church. But when you give to God, you will be blessed. That's the word of God. He'll shake it down. He'll press it, and he will run it over. He will supply your needs. Amen. Sister Becky, would you raise your right hand? That's your hand of covenant this morning. This is my tithe and offering, and it will do what God says it will do. The windows of heaven are open over me and my house, and such blessings have been released that I do not have adequate room to contain them all. I am the seed of Abraham, and the oath God swore to him is my inheritance. Therefore, I release my tithes and my offering to the fertile soil of his presence. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen. Give the Lord a good clap of worship this morning. Praise the Lord. I'm going to go ahead. 
Well, Sister Marianne had the testimony. Let's get, go ahead and give your testimony. I forgot about that. Go right ahead. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick testimony. Uh, Jimmy's got a cousin who lives in Cumberland, Kentucky, and um, he preaches at a little church. And a couple weeks ago, my mother-in-law said, um, I think we need to go to Cumberland to this little church because Jimmy grew up there and he kind of wanted to go and see it. And so the first Sunday, and of course we didn't get a hold of anybody, so we didn't know what time church started, if we needed to go to, so we just kind of went on a whim and went there. And the first Saturday we tried to go, we got all the way to Harlan and it started snowing so bad that we had to turn around and go back. And so we couldn't even make it to the church. So we tried again last night. We got all the way to the church and we got to the, up there and it's a, I don't know if anybody's ever been to Cumberland, Kentucky, but it's a little, little tiny, it's back in the hills. And this little church is back against the mountain, and it's just a little bitty thing. So there was nobody there, but there was two notes on the door. And so I said, let me go see if this has got a time on it. And so I went, and the first sign said, not responsible for accidents. And the second sign said, not responsible for COVID. And I thought, this is my kind of church. <laughs> um, so anyway, we left from there because it was 6 o'clock and no one was there. So we thought, okay, it starts at 7. Well, his dad said, well, you know, Henry, but... Cousin Henry used to live over this hill right here. He might still live there. He's not seen him in years or anything. So he might still live there. Let's just stop and see if he's there and we can find out. So we dropped them off because we couldn't get down into where they were at. We dropped them off on the road. And uh, they stayed a few minutes. It turned to be his house and they talked. Long story short, we come back to the car and uh, he says they're not having church right now because their furnace messed up. And so they can't afford to get a new furnace. And cousin uh, Henry, the Lord, or er, the doctors told him that he's got cancer, and they only give him a short time to live. So immediately in my spirit, in all of our spirits, we were like, there was a reason why two different times we tried to get here, and we couldn't make it. But we're going back to this house, and we're going to hand in this thing. So we did. We went back, and I just so happened to have a, a prayer cloth that I got from the church in the last several days. We went back, and we laid hands on him. And I'm believing that he's healed, completely healed. And um, also, I want everybody to believe um, that the Lord will send them a new furnace they can start church but yes but he is he said when i he said i know i'm healed and he said when the church opens back up he said we're having revival so i just wanted to give that testimony oh. i felt a many revivals back in them hollows <laughs> you wouldn't even think there'd be a church back in some of them <laughs> And, uh, but boy, have I seen the power of God move in some of them. Amen. Glory to God. I, God is good, isn't he? Whoa, oh, I feel the presence of the Lord in here. I just feel like, I, I'm going to say this, I have an urgency. I, I'm going to share the word. I probably won't get to use my notes because God just keeps changing things and gives me stuff. But, and, and I learned a long time ago, just obey what God does. You know, I, I, I quit trying to impress people a long time ago. Uh, with, with my preaching, so I just want to get the word out there because the word will do more in, in one second than I could do in a lifetime. And so that's what I want to do. God's about to do something. And, and he showed me something I want to share with you here in just a little bit. Because uh, God, can I, can I, everybody agree that God's going to take care of his people? Yeah. How many believes that if you're a child of God, you've been sealed? Oh, I feel an anointing. So when I'm ministering this morning, I want you to keep that in mind. I've been sealed, and I'm God's. I've been sealed, and I'm God's. Hallelujah. We're going to go. Let's just go ahead and change the service. Give them a hand this morning. They, uh, there's a, I feel a little uh, revival spirit in me. I'd like to just crank the music up and get me a song and do a little ministering, <laughs> a little dancing. I, I feel that in my soul. I really do this morning. God is good. Uh, I didn't make no announcements, but uh, sometimes well, you all know in many ways. Uh, don't forget our services this week and what God's about to do. I, I think that we're in a time, church, in a season, and, and I want you to listen close, and, and and a lot of times, pastors would not, when, when they have something like this to say, a lot of times they turn the cameras off. I don't believe in that. I believe if I can say it up here, it should go out. You know, I'm not ashamed of what God gives me, and I will stand on it. Amen? 
But I want to say this to you. Uh, there's times that God weighs us in the balance. And it's a changing time. You'll never, you'll either go forward or you'll stand still or you'll go, they'll never, it's never going to be like it is. It's never going to be like it is. And I feel this in my spirit this morning. I'm going to share with you what God has, some of the things that God told me, that showed me, that God's about to do. And, and then we're going to just see, we're going to see some miracles take place this morning. If you need something, I want you to get ready to receive. I'm going to try to be very brief. It's hard for me to be brief sometimes. I have that preacher's mouth that just, we have about 10 closings, and <laughs> we like to talk, but God's about to do something. And I want to share this with you, that what God showed me. But, and it, it's going to go, I believe it goes right with some of the word that I will minister to you this morning. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to be taking my text out of 2 Timothy, uh, the first chapter, and the 12th to the 14th verse. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord, I pray right now, God, for guidance. Lord, the anointing to direct my mind and my tongue, God. Lord, let me say, God, what you gave me permission to say. And Lord, that, that should not be spoken, God. Let me not speak it this day. Lord, I ask that you open the hearts of the congregation that they might receive the word. Father, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, that not only will it be sown in the good ground of the heart, Lord, that it will bring forth a hundred, even a thousand foe. Father, I ask it right now in the name of Jesus. God's about to do something. Hallelujah. I'm not even going to do my little prayer. I started, I finished it with this morning. I, I feel an urgency. Sometimes you have to guard young hearts. Sometimes you got to get guard your own hearts. Would you, let's just stand for the reading of the word this morning, if you're able. Now, this is Apostle Paul talking to Timothy. This is the second letter that he wrote to Timothy. He said, For the which cause I also suffered these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know. Whom I, believe, whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Can I have amen on that? Amen. Verse 13, hold fast the form of sound words. I, wanna, I want you to read that with me one more time. Hold fast the form of sound words. This is so important. And, and then... It says, which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 14, that good things which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Yeah. Amen. G give the Lord a hand for them. Sure. You may be seated. There's, there's three things I want to bring to your attention real fast. I already know that you know this. But there's three things that I want you to understand is sometimes in this life, we go through things that we absolutely don't understand. There's times that things come against us that we don't understand. We can't explain it. There's times, and I'm speaking to a congregation out there too, that people are, they don't understand what's going on in their life. There's people that's listening to me right now that don't understand why there's fear in their life. They don't understand. It. There's people that have lost loved ones due to COVID that are hurting. Some are mad at God. Some just don't know what to do. Amen? There's pastors and churches around the United States right now that are wringing their hands, what can I do, God? They don't understand. Speaking to our county, and I believe this could go across America, 
but to see the spirits that have come against our young people in our community. You wouldn't think this in a little country county. How the the homosexual spirit comes against our youth. I've counseled them, I know. It's sad, some of the stories I've heard. And we don't know what to do. There's families that are divided. And they don't, what can I do? I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about even in the church. They're hurting. I'm going to talk a little bold for a second. I got to get this out because I can give you what God's about to do. But the spirit of addiction. Boy, I'm fixing to make some people mad and I don't care. Addiction is not a disease. It's an unclean spirit that needs to be delivered. Can I say that? Because I'm tired of patting little things on the back saying, well, it's a take care of it. I'm telling you, I still remember seeing thousands of people set free by the power of my God. Glory! You say, Pastor, why are you saying this? I'm saying this because I got a word for you this morning. I got a word for you. I want you to know that, and this is Paul said, what the Lord has given me, I can, he'll keep it. Jesus said in John 17, 12, he said, all those that you've given me, God, I have kept, except Judas is there. In John 18, I believe it's verse 9, he says, I, all those that you have committed unto me, I have not lost one. I've got, I've got something to tell you. You see, oh man, I got to watch how I say this to get my process, because I don't want to lose you. We have been taught and we've been, and I use the word sport, is that all right? With you in the church, we have taught and we spoil people that all you have to do is say, I'm a Christian and everything's all right. That is not biblical. Put up Psalms 91.1. Somebody sent me Psalms 91 and a great message. And I was in the middle of this message. I thought, well, this just goes with it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want to just mention this. There's two things I want you to take notice of right here. There is a place that's under the shadow of the Almighty God. There is a place that's in the shadow of the Most High God. Just being a Christian does not put you in that place. Did you hear what I'm saying? Now, if you understand who you are in Christ, yes. But you, we have not been taught who we are in Christ, and then we don't know about the shadow of the Almighty. And so that's why we have people that are so afraid. Oh, I have to say this. Some, I'm not, boy, I want to turn the camera off right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. The first thing that you have to admit to be set free from something is that you have it. I believe that there's time to admit, yes, I have fear. Yes, I have fear. Because I'm going to show you how to get under the shadow of the Almighty this morning. I'm going to show you how to walk in victory. I'm going to show you how to get rid of all fear. I'm going to show you what it is to be a child of the living God and see what God's about to do. Now I'm going to give you a little prophecy right here before I get into this. This is prophecy. 
25 years ago, God gave me a, a prophecy, and I gave it to a church I was preaching at that night. And I said, there's a move of God coming that's going to shake Claiborne County that's coming out of the south. And I said, I said, you'll not recognize church as it is today. This is 25 years ago. I said, churches are going to change. This move of God's going to be different than any move of God. I went into some details. I have preached that for 25 years. I've been, and all this don't matter. I'm not even going to go there about it. Any of the negatives, I don't care. I'm preaching positive. And God spoke to me a while ago in worship and he showed me a vision. He said, phase two is coming. I'm going to tell you something. There's two things that he showed me in phase two. Number one is there's a fear that's going to hit America like it's never seen before. There's a shaking him about to shake. There's something that you say, Pastor, you're preaching, you're telling doom. I'm, not, I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit says. A year before the colleges closed, I stood in this church and I told him it would. I told him the schools because God gave it to me. God gave me this. But listen to what he said. In this spirit phase, I'm sending my move. He said, in this phase, I'm sending my move. In other words, there are going to be people that are shaking in their boots and the church is going to have the peace of God and have no fear and be rejoicing under the blessings of God. How can this be, Pastor? Because we are not children of the world. We're children of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God can never, never lose. God says, God says, I'm telling you that it's here. The winds are blowing. He actually pointed. I seen a hand. And I'm sure there's an angel out of pointing to the south says, coming. I could tell you some other things he showed me. I will not tell you that a handful of people know. People in intelligence know some things. Let me tell you, there's some things going on below the border that if we knew about it, we would have fear all over us. How do you know, Pastor? Because God showed me some of them. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said, my peace, I'll leave with you. So, Pastor, what are you talking about dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty? What are you talking about receiving? I'm going to give you three quick things in the Bible. I'm going to try to be very quick. And every one of these are probably a good hour message, so you've got to pray for me. Maybe four things I'll share with you. In Nehemiah, the third chapter, the 14th verse, Sister Lisa can put these up here. Nehemiah was told to go back to Jerusalem and build the walls, and it was torn completely down. There was no security. The land weighed in waste. It was awful. They didn't know. You see... The enemy thinks the church is laying in waste. Come on. He thinks he's got the church beat. Hey, amen on that. They think well, we're not ever going to see salvation again. We're not ever going to see miracles like the Bible says. The church has almost given up on self. And this is Nehemiah. 3.14. I'm sorry. In Nehemiah 3.14, I'm going to just touch on these real quick. Go, is that, the, put the rest of the verse up there. That's not the verse I want, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, one of these days I'll read. It's probably chapter 4. 14. See what 414 has got. This is the one I want. 
I want to go right to the middle of this person. I want you to look at it. Everything troubled. The walls are down. The enemies encamped them. The enemy said that they're going to destroy them. And this is what Nehemiah stood up and told the people. Be ye not afraid. Remember the Lord. This is what I'm going to tell you. You remember what Apostle Paul told Stephen? He said, you got to remember the sound words. You got to remember, this is what the Lord's saying. Somehow we forgot who God was. You want to know who my Lord is? He's the Lord that took an old country boy and raised him out of sin and put me upon the rock. He's the one when I was tore all the pieces that put me back together. He's the God that I serve. When I remember my God, there's something comes up and all fear has to leave because my God has never failed me or never will. Remember who your God is. There's some people right here this morning, you're going through something, you need to stand up and say, God, I remember when you brought me through it. I remember what you've done for me. I know that you've never failed me. And God's about to do something. I want to, just for a second, I want to go to 415. In Nehemiah 4.15 it says, The enemies compassed them. Our enemies heard it was known unto us. And God brought their counsel to naught. Can I tell you what God's fixing to do for those that dwell under the shadow of the Almighty? He's going to shut up the soothsayers. I'm telling you. Those... You ever give somebody a positive word and five minutes later somebody drags them right down? You know why they're there? I learned this on the streets. I'd be witnessing to somebody and they'd be getting ready. God would be getting ready to heal them and save them and, and just touch them. And all of a sudden all this interference would come. And the Lord told me don't put up with that no more. I still remember the first time I ever tried this. He sat with a little bottle. I've had that for years. Don't, there's no oil in it because the little container dissolved. And when I put oil, it leaks in my pocket. But I still carry it. I was witness on the street, and this guy was about ready to give his heart to the Lord. And two of his buddies, or one of his buddies at this time, come up and said, let's do this, and just start cutting me off. And God said, don't take it no more. I pulled out my little oil bottle, and I said, you either shut your mouth, or I'm going to anoint you with this oil. The last I seen of him, he was doing about 100 miles an hour, two blocks away. You want to know something? It wasn't because of this oil bottle. It was because I spoke the word of God, and God said, I've had enough. The guy gave his heart to the Lord, was delivered, handed, wanted to hand me a gun. He was going to kill somebody. I thought, I want your gun. Go throw it in the Tennessee River. And he actually become a minister for the gospel. Come on now. You see, we, God's going to put them at naught. Yes. Somebody says, well, pastor, they're attacking the church right now. Who cares? Yeah. Come on. What can they do to hurt the church? Nothing. If they lock the doors, would it hurt the church? No. Where is the church? They cannot lock the doors of your heart because you're the only one that has keys to it. Get rid of some fear, church. Come on. I gotta hurry, I'm getting too long. Verse number 20. This is a theme that you're gonna see. This is what happens when you dwell under the under the hand of the Almighty. This is why I'm telling you you can have victory in matter. What? It says, In what place therefore you hear the sound of the trumpet, restore you hither unto us, for our God shall what? Hallelujah. I'm not telling you you don't have to get ready to fight. I'm not telling you you don't have to make a stand. I'm not telling you you don't have to speak. But I'm telling you God's going to fight your battle. You know why so many people are, 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 are hurting, don't know where to turn? It's because they're fighting their own battles. 
I've got a God that will fight my battle. You say, how do you do that, Pastor? I remember going to a seminar one time, and, uh, and uh, to be truthful, it was one of these weekend seminars, and I, I really loved this man. And, and he was a, man, was he a teacher? But the only thing I ever remember he taught was the last thing he said. On the last day, he closed out that. He said, when you come to an altar and you lay down your burdens, you lay down your need, it belongs to God. But he said, if you pick, if you get up and you pick that up and take back with you, it's no longer God, it's yours. And God can't fight your battle. In other words, leave it. How can you do it? It's too hard. It's only as you begin to trust the Lord, you can see this begin to happen. Can somebody say praise the Lord? I'm going to go quickly now. There's one more verse I want to get here. And, and this is why I want to show you how that we, I know that we have victory. Verse 21. This is why we need each other. Church, if there's ever a time that we need one another, it's right now. Half of them worked. And the other half stood behind them with spears. See, they switched out. One day one worked, one day the other. But they looked out for one another. You know what's wrong right now? Why the church is hurting like it is? Um, it's because we ain't to protect one another. We're fighting one another. This church is bearing that church. This pastor is bearing that pastor. This preacher is bearing that. I'm going to tell you something. We're all serving the same God. I like what Andy Griffith told Barney one time. We're on the same side. <laughs> you can go say Bill Chapman preached on Andy Griffith. <laughs> but we are on the same side. And you see, it's time that we defend one another. When you've got your hands to the wheel song and you're working, you might need somebody to stand there and say, come on, when the enemy comes, I'm ready for them. And when it's your turn, be vice versa. You see, I'm saying this because I believe it's time that we walk in victory in this world. Very quickly, you go to 1 Samuel. Let's just go down to the 17th verse for time. I'm, uh, 1 Samuel 17, 46. I'm sorry. 47. Do 47. I'm going to just talk about 46. There's times that if you want to dwell under the hand of the Almighty, and this, a lot of us are in this place right now, that you want to get rid of your fears and you want to see God move in your life. You want to see deliverance in your home and your family. Sometimes you've got to be like David was. Out of all Israel, David had to stand by himself. How many know sometimes they just nobody stands with you? You're just there. As much as I love my wife, and this is Bella Times Day, and this is a, a special day for husbands and wives and girls and boys and all that good stuff. I see these nice-looking young men back here. I learned this early on. I shouldn't tell my secrets. I always broke up about a week before Valentine's Day. <laughs> I ain't the only one. I see smiles all over this place. That's a trick that guys use, you know. Keeps us from buying them Valentine's Day. No. <laughs> but see, what happens is sometimes David was all by himself. But he remembered the word of God. In the 46th verse, he said to him, he said, my God is going to deliver you into my hands. He had nobody else saying amen, nobody else around him. He was standing in the middle of a battlefield with a giant and a host of enemy around him. And he says, my God is going to deliver you into my hands. I'm going to tell you something. Look unto your mountain and say, my God is going to deliver you into my hands. Well, glory, you cannot live in fear when God is on your side. You may not understand it. You may cry all night long. So I'm not going to tell you you're going to sit there and rejoice all night. 
But I'll tell you one thing. The sun is going to come up in the morning and it's not the S-U-N, it's the S-O-N. David looked at him. This is what we have to remember. This is, again, all the sin we saw this, the swords and the spears, but that's what the, David said, for the battle is whose? The Who's the battle? The Lord. Wow. How can you, how can we lose when the battle belongs to the Lord? Wow. You got to help me here. Somebody says, Pastor, you got me confused. You say there's a storm coming. I'm going to tell you something. We already went through phase one with no experience. Amen. We went through phase one and we made it. This one is going to be different than phase one. It's going to have a move of God in amongst it. This is where I could probably preach for about five hours. Boy, I wish I packed a lunch. <laughs> Second Chronicles 20. And let, we'll start down in Verse 14. I'm going to get to again very quickly. The Moabites and the Ammonites and all this got together and they said, we're going to go take care of Jehoshaphat, all of them. Jehoshaphat was a, I don't know if I pronounced that right. I've done that for 50 years, Jehoshaphat. Some people pronounce it a little different. But he called a fast and a prayer. He didn't know what else to do. God, what am I going to do? I'm outnumbered. He called a fast and a prayer. And go back to what I told you in Timothy. Paul said, Timothy, listen to my words. Because sometimes the word you're going to need is going to come from a man of God or a woman of God or a person of God. Do you hear me? It's going to come from a person of God. And if you push it aside, you're not teaching, you're not standing on the word. Wow. But Brother Bill, uh oh. <laughs> Roll your toes in. <laughs> I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you something to go by right here. Well, how do you know if it's God or not? Don't give me that foolishness. Don't give me that foolishness. The Holy Spirit in you. We'll only let you know, we'll let you know in one second what's of God. If you don't have an understanding what, what prophet to listen to, listen to the Holy Spirit, because he knows. And you say, but pastor, sometimes I hear a word of prophecy, I don't understand. But I know it's God. And down the road, I will understand it. But I knew it was God. You see, you know what God says. And so Hezekiah called a, a prayer, or not Jehoshaphat called a prayer, and God sent a prophet, the son of Zechariah. I'm saying this because there's people that need to hear this that's watching this. You're, you're out here hunting Superman, and God's got somebody with a word, and it may not suit your perfection. I shouldn't, I, I probably shouldn't say what I'm about to say because I pastor a small church, but I'm repeating what I heard a man that pastors thousands, a church that runs in a thousand said. And this is what he said. He said, if a man or a woman of God has a word, he said, I don't care if they're in a barn on a hay bale, you better go hear it. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whoa. You see, we, we've got this place where we, we don't want to hear this or that. Can I tell you something? God still uses ministers. God still uses his prophets. God still uses his apostles. He still uses his teachers. 
we're still men and women of God, and God's going to use them. And there's times that God, I, I just feel this right now. There's somebody that needs a special touch right now. Raise your hand. Go ahead, don't be bashful. I, I can come back. I'm going to pronounce a healing on you right now. I can see it. In the name of Jesus. You say, Pastor, you have the authority? Everybody here has the same authority. In the name of Jesus. Do you see how? In the name of You see, this is what the Word says. Glory to God. Somebody says, Pastor, it cannot be that easy. It's not that easy because we got 50 years of religion telling us it's not that way. When the Bible says that's just the way it is. And so, number one is he sent a prophet. Now let's go down to verse 15. And this is what the prophet said. Listen to him. Go to the first part first. He says, first thing the prophet said, hear me. You better hear me, Judah. You better hear me. In other words, he's saying, I'm saying this one time. This is it. Now, it, go to the latter part of the verse. This is what he said. He said, be not afraid or dismayed. I love this. Don't worry about how great your problem is or your great model. Don't worry about it. You see, some people think because they're in such a great dire need that it's impossible for God to move. I'm going to tell you, be not afraid or dismayed. The same God that saved you is going to take care of you right now. Well, glory. And then listen to what he says. For the battle is not yours. Do you, are you seeing what the theme is? How do you walk in victory? How do you walk? Is this? Is you got to understand who God is. Apostle Paul says he dwells with you. He fights your battles. He's your protector. He's the one around you. Sometimes we don't understand that or we forget it. I've been there. Maybe your body's in pain or hurting or, or things are just happening so fast. And all of a sudden, then somebody got to remind you what the Word says. And then all of a sudden, it comes. And so you have to hear the prophet said, be not afraid. Now listen to what he said. Let's go. I want to go down. What verse on Mount 15? Go to 17 very quickly. And I want you to listen to what he said in 17. He says, he says, fear not or be dismayed. Is that the one I just read? Oh, the Lord will be with you. That's the one, that's what I want to get with you. Is we have a promise in John 14, 14 that God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Holy Spirit will never leave you or forsake you. This is my promise. And so even when I am surrounded by my enemies, even when it looks like that my wagon's burned and I'm about to lose my life, guess what? Who's with me? He's not abandoned me. He's going to raise me up through the ashes. I feel it right now. I feel that God says, can, can I speak to some those that's in ministry about everybody hears in some time? God's taking your ministry, and he's just raising it out. What everybody said couldn't happen. All the ashes around you, people said, this is wrong. God's raising you up right now. He's appointed you for this time. Glory to God. Now, here's what you have to look. This is the important part. This is what Paul told. This is what Paul told uh, Timothy, this is what I'm going to tell you. Go to verse number 20. The last part of this verse says, Believe his prophets and you shall what? Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. In other words, you cannot say, well, I don't believe the prophet. And have this. Because the prophet gave the word of God. You say, but pastor, this is, because we, we, we have this big debate on false prophets, all this. That's a bunch of foolishness that the enemy's using to take your mind off what God has to bring peace to you. You say, but pastor, what if they're a false prophet? Don't worry about it. God takes care of them. We ain't self-appointed judges. Amen. You say, well, well, that preacher down there, he don't believe in laying on a hand, but who cares? That's his business. I 
remember going to a revival one time, Sister Becky and I did. Well, Lisa may remember this too. She is. And I, at first, I didn't like this evangelist. So we were going to a Pentecostal church, and there was a Baptist preacher come that did not believe in speaking in tongues. He just had never experienced the gifts of the Spirit. And I thought to myself, what in the world the pastor got in his head? Well, I thought at first. Can I tell you what happened? I think there's 20-some people got saved that week. Long about Thursday night, that preacher said, I've seen you speak in these tongues and all this. He says, I want it. He received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, pastor of the church in Bean Station. He started for 20-some years, and they threw him out. He said, I don't care. I've got something better than church. Guess what he's doing at the end of the week? He is laying hands on the sick, and God was healing them. Now, what would have happened if I would have said, oh, that guy's out of order? What in the world does that pastor think he's doing? Can I tell you something? It's time that we hear the word of God by the men and women of God and let God take care of what God wants to take care of. I don't know where that comes from. But you see, and, and y'all know that a lot of people read this in 20th chapter, and I'm just going to, this is not even my mess, I'm just throwing this in. And, and they say, well, the king got all the worshipers out there, and they just worshiped their way, and God sent ambushes. But before all that happened, they had to believe the prophet. They had to hear the word and believe it. Or it wouldn't happen. Wow. I'm going to close right here. I'm going one more. I touched on this Thursday night. Acts, the 27th chapter. Go to the 23rd verse. You see, sometimes we go through things, and we say, God, why am I in this? But God knows you have to understand what the Word of God says. So Apostle Paul had heard, God had told him, said, Paul, you've got to go to Rome. And so he entered the ship as a prisoner to go to Rome, and he told the, the, the guy as alone, the captain and the people on the ship, he said, we need to stay in this harbor for a while. But they didn't listen. And they got out to the sea, and the great storm came. For 14 days, the sun didn't shine. They didn't even eat or drink water for 14 days. There was one person on that boat that knew he was going to live. That was Paul. You know why? Because he already had word from God, I've got to go. I'm going to Rome. And so in this 20th verse, Paul was still encouraging people. He said, for there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord, whose I am. See, I'm a child of God. And I serve my God. That's why I can say, I don't care what the storm you're in is, you're a child of God, and the God that you serve knows who you are. And I want you to go to the next verse, 24. And Paul said this to the people. He said, fear not. There's that fear not again. He said, Paul, this angel told Paul, said, fear not. Thou must be brought before Caesar. You know what the angel said? He said, Paul, you already have your word. That you're going before Caesar. So Paul knew this. But then the angel added something special. And you listen to this. You see the church thinks that no matter what happened. We're going to just get under our umbrella. And that's going to be all that's going to take place. You better read what happened here. You know what the, the angel told Paul? He said every soldier. Every person on that boat. I give to you. Wow. God is not just going to protect his people in the times it's about to happen or that is happen. He's going to give us all those around us. We will be a safe harbor for all that hear the word of God. You know why people will flock to your house? 
because they won't feel comfortable in ours. They'll be full of fear. But when they walk into your home, there's going to be such a safe harbor of the presence of God. You know why people's going to hear you minister? It's because you're going to have a safe harbor for in a time of a troubled sea. Let me tell you something. Out of every great persecution, out of every great storm, God has always sustained a glorious church that has not only made it, but has come through with victory and has come through powerful. I would dwell under the hand of the Almighty, the shadow of the Almighty. Jesus looked out over Jerusalem one time and, and supposedly I stood in the spot where he said this. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how many times would I have gathered you as a hand gathers its chicks but you would not? Wake up. Listen to me. Wake up. That's what God's saying. I'm going to gather you. I'm going to be, I want you under my mouth. I want you under me. I want you to be there. So you might be in the middle of a storm. I'm not going to say that we've come through the hardest storms of my life. But I will say that we've seen some storms. Maybe things that we could not figure out. But in the midst of every storm I've ever been in my life, I've never stood in fear. Did I want to fear? Yes. Did I want to run? Yes. Stand up just a minute, Sister Becky. Come on. But every single time that the spirit of fear would try to come on me, I felt something right here. You said, Pastor, you felt him behind you? I sure did. He called my fronts covered in the armor. You hear what I said right there? And I always heard that, my peace, my peace, I leave with you. This is for somebody right now. For somebody listening to this, that you're, you're so troubled because you're addicted to some type of drug. You've tried everything. There's somebody going to stand behind you. They're going to tell you it's all right. There's people that listen to me, there's things that's went on cancer and stuff that hit your body you, you can't explain. You want to know something that I want you to think about this just for a moment. What about the preachers, the ministers, of men, the men and women of God that's come down sick with the COVID? They didn't need somebody judgmental on them. They didn't need you to, nobody to say nothing. You know what they needed? They needed somebody to lift them up. Because they had no understanding. Man, I'm going to feel like preaching. You see, God didn't put us in here. I, I know that I know that I know that I have the victory. I don't care how hard the storm may get. Sometimes my natural mind can't see an answer. Several times this week I went before God. I said, God, I don't even know how to pray. I said, I don't even know how to pray. But I said, God, you gave me a language. And I'd begin to pray. Sometimes I'd drive in my car. Sometimes I might be here at church. Sometimes I'd be at home. But I'd just begin to pray. Sometimes I'd be in my prayer closet. I said, God, I want to pray. I don't know how to pray. I said, God, I know you promised this move of God. I know it's real, but I don't know how to pray. And in the twinkling of an eye, sometime in the worship service this morning, God showed me. He says, it's coming. Or actually, the wind's already blowing. Wasn't what I thought. Wasn't nothing like I thought. Then he said, phase two's with it. I don't know what phase two means. 
I'm not going to stand here and tell you I have some kind of insight. I have no idea. But I'm going to tell you this. I don't care what face he is. God is going to see me do it. Well, glory. My faith has to be in the Word of God. There's people right here this morning. Sister Lisa, if you come to the music real quick. I didn't even see Jimmy back there. I said, where's my drummer? <laughs> my little man showing teeth. I want that one. Jesus of Nazareth. Walk in life. I'm not, I'm not a novelist in this. I'm not Superman. I'm one preacher to tell you, I fell on my face more than once in my life. I've got scars to show you. I'm not going to tell you I've always been perfect because I've let God down a time or two in my life. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that I walk on the clouds. I don't. I walk through the valleys like everybody else. I go through the clouds occasionally up and down. But I'm going to tell you one thing. This I know. That even when I failed, he picked me up. Even when I stumbled, he never let me go. Even though there are times I didn't even know which way to turn. I didn't know which way to turn. There were times I would just sit and cry before God because I couldn't even speak. I didn't even know. Somebody said, well, you should have prayed in the Spirit. There were times I was so down, I couldn't even let my spirit pray. There were times I thought I'd never get to step in the pulpit ever again in my life. But out of my weakness, through my tears, I said one word. Jesus. Jesus. Talk could say Jesus. Jesus. You see, there's some people right here. You haven't felt God. You haven't been in the shape I've been. You just... You're just in circumstances. Lord, what can I do? You understand, God, there's people that's listening. You don't understand how to lay it down. I, I know I'm speaking. I can tell you to color your hair. I see you right now. There's somebody that's watching me that you're so addicted. You give anything in your life not to take it. And you don't know what to do. You're going to do what I did. You're going to just say Jesus right now. Everybody in this church say Jesus with them. There it is. That easy. The peace of God's coming. There's people right here this morning. You don't know what, what to do. You're not a bad person. There's nothing wrong. You just say, I can't understand it. Somebody needs to say Jesus.
Give me a course of that. Let's stand to our feet, those that say. Something good is going to happen to you. softly again if you're here right now and you need a miracle you remember what I said you have to go you have to do something to be under the shadow you got to do your part I normally won't I normally can pray for you anywhere but I, I'm gonna obey that what I feel in my spirit right now I want you to say Jesus and I want you to come up and make me a line. If there, if nobody comes, that's all right. But if you hear, make me a line. Step out right now. Don't be bashful. There's something holding you back. Don't worry. Something good. There's others. To to you. feel this in my spirit go ahead and play it softly I wonder how many times I wonder how many times that we stood at the gates of heaven at the windows of heaven and never received. How many times has God had it right there and said, I'm wanting to give it to you and we never received. There's others. There's people in their homes right now. To you, oh, it will happen to you. This very day. Let her sit right there. This very day, something good is going to happen to you. For Jesus of Nazareth. fixing to pray with these I want those that believe in prayer I'm going to ask you to come up I want you to pray for the just get behind or pray with something right here but I want to say this before we do one more time sometimes we say but pastor I've been prayed for I've been prayed for a hundred times I believe that. I, I give this, I tell this about when I come back to God. It shouldn't have, but it took me four times. I would come every Sunday morning and I'd give my heart to the Lord back. I'd go back out to sin by Wednesday. I know people didn't like it. And I knew they didn't understand, but I knew I wasn't where I need to be. I can't explain what happened that fourth time. I guess I finally surrendered all. Yeah, come on. But I never was the same. 
That's been probably 47, 48 years ago. 40 some years ago. I've never been the same. I'm glad that I didn't quit on time three. I'm glad I come one more time. Give me that course. God's speaking to somebody that needs a touch in your life. You need your whole situation turned around. Your finances, your way of life. You need a whole thing. And God's saying, I'll turn it around today. I'll begin it today. It will happen to you. Some of my prayer warriors come up. Some of these that pray, believe, come begin to come. Brother Tom, you and Sister Karen come, y'all are people of faith. Brother Doug, come on. Others. You don't have to be asked, come. I'm not I'm not including everybody anybody. If you believe in it, come around. If you don't believe in it, don't come. Hallelujah. If you're back there, would you just agree with us right now? You got to believe with them right now, church. You got to pray deliverance and pray God's going to move in the name of Jesus. Every circumstance is going to be worked out right now. Jesus. That's all I can say is Jesus. That's all I can say is Jesus. somebody come on come on get ready church get ready get ready get ready
one more time. Oh. I won't, I won't, well, another person. I want you to run around this building because I, I feel this in my spirit. God is fixing to break some, some chains that, that have been interfered to your finances and things in your life. God's fixing to set you free in this. And I need somebody to run around this building and say, in the name of Jesus, and then we're all going to say it. Right now. Somebody. Yeah, come, come on. on. one person to walk around right there. Father, come on. We're going to break some families loose right here. Break my family loose, God. Break my family loose, Lord. I just can't stop praising his name. No, I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising the name of Jesus. Well, I just can't stop praising his name. No, I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop Praise in the name of Jesus. Oh, I just can't stop. Praise in the name. Oh, I just can't stop. Praise in the name. I just can't stop. Praise in the name of Jesus. Hey, oh, I just can't stop. Praise in the name. Oh, I just can't stop. Praise in the name. I just can't stop. Praise in the name of Jesus. Shout out my mind. Come on. Oh, I just can't stop. Praise in the name. I just can't stop. Praise in the name, I just can't stop. Praise in the name of Jesus. Oh, I just can't stop. Praise in the name, I just can't stop. Praise in the name, I just can't stop. Praise in the name of Jesus. Oh, I just can't stop. Oh, I just can't stop. Oh, I just can't stop. Praise in the name of Jesus. Oh, I just can't stop. Well, I just can't stop. Praising his name. Well, I just come on, Nicole. Praise Go ahead. Jesus. Let it out. Oh, I just can't stop. Praising the name. I just can't stop. Praising the name. I just can't stop. Praising the name of Jesus. Just can't stop. Praising his name. No, I just can't stop. Praising his name. No, I just can't stop. Praising the name of Jesus. No, I just can't stop praising his name. No, I just can't stop praising his name. No, I just can't stop praising the name of Jesus.